Okay. So can we see that there? Yeah. See, there's Sophia. <laughs> So, um, hi, thank you so much for having me. I have to try to see if I can get the chat in here in case I have questions. So let me see if I can access that as well. I yeah, think and I can help. I think um, I'm just gonna stick it right here in the corner somewhere. There we go. Okay. That's great. So, I mean, it's interesting. I love this. I love how all of these associations can work together, actually. That's just amazing. And I am super excited to be here and present uh, here for you. So like I said, I teach at Salish um, along with Tammy. I'm the president of the Surrey Art Teachers Association. And I'm also the BC Art Teachers Association graduation curriculum representative for the province, just like what you guys are getting together to do today. Um, about about I let's like two years ago, I was approached by the helping teacher here in Surrey um, because there was this really huge high demand of elementary school teachers not having the right, um, I guess, tools or skills to be teaching arts in the classroom. So um, and then we kind of wanted to do something a little bit different instead of me hosting. At the beginning, we started with me hosting just these regular uh, workshops where I would teach people techniques and stuff like that. And then we started thinking of like the bigger picture. How can we merge um, curriculum together? And we started thinking about how can we use picture books in a way to inspire kids of all grades uh, to create art. And we started this big series. Actually, my first workshop that I did was on a book, I don't know, I'm pretty sure you've probably heard it if you're an elementary school librarian, is called If Picasso Painted a Snowman. And that was my first uh, book that I did. And I did a whole series on art history and how, um, and how to incorporate art history and specifically this book into the elementary classroom. And from there, it kind of snowballed. Um, so like, and then the book that we did today, I, I did a workshop on everywhere, uh, everywhere artist. Last week, I had about 40 people in here and we did this other amazing book called Playmates. I don't know if you've ever seen this. It's um, just, a, just a wonderful book. And for the Surrey people, in case you want to know, I will be presenting another workshop on this amazing book called The Magical Yet. I will be presenting this at the Surrey uh, Teachers Association um, conference. Um, but... So if you're in Surrey, this is awesome. If not, we can always meet again in the future as a province and I can show you this lesson. I'm actually really excited about this book. So, but today I want to focus on this guy right here. Okay. So I'm hoping you all have a copy of this because I will probably will only be reading like certain excerpts from it, um, but you kind of want to tag along uh, and then I'll kind of give you some art ideas that you can do uh, and you can help the teachers in your schools with how you can use this particular picture book to create amazing and fun activities. So let's get started. Does anybody have any questions though, before we get started? Um, should we mention that five lucky winners who are attending today's session and are actually gonna get a copy of that book from the BCTLA? Great. Oh, that thanks for reminding me. Yes, it yes. is an amazing book. It was like, I don't even know, like, so this was gifted to me. And then from here on, I kind of was started going on this hunt so I'm always hunting for these amazing books. I like about uh, two months ago, I did a workshop on a book called uh, Shades of Brown, um, basically owning skin color. And it was so, it was like, I probably had 70 people at the workshop and um, it, it was amazing to see. And then I actually ended up, teachers were sending me pictures of their kids work and how they were talking about skin and the difference in skin color. And it was all inspired by this book. So I feel like um, it's such an amazing opportunity to have this kind of bridging together, uh, being inspired by beautiful literature. And um, like, really, I can go on on this. I did another workshop, from another book that's local. I can tell you all about it at the end. But let's get started on this book. Okay, so before I start, obviously, I like to um, acknowledge, so I would like to acknowledge that we are on the shared traditional unceded territories of the Coast Salish people, especially here in the land where I work. Um, I appreciate this beautiful land in which we work, learn and play. And we are grateful for this opportunity to be together and learning from each other today. So I'm gonna have to move my little screens around here so I can see everybody in my chat. So imaginative play, and this is kind of where I wanna start a focus uh, when we look at this book. 
A hundred years ago, Soviet psychologist and play theorist Lev Vukowski, as we're pretty sure we've all heard of him when we were doing our, uh, our uh, uh, when we were all trying to get our teaching degrees, um, argued that play was purposely purposeful activity for children. Vygotsky believed that child's greatest achievements were possible in play and that imaginative play is particularly was an opportunity for children to become adaptive while problem solving um, to use available resources for their own playful benefit. Um, I mention this to assure you that we have 100 years of research supporting the significant benefit of imaginative play for healthy childhood uh, development. And that we, uh, and by allowing our children to simply muck in the mud, uh, we're encouraging creativity and imaginative divergent thinking. So this workshop is about imaginative play supported by this book called Anywhere Artist. Gotta move my little screens around again. This is where I wish my laptop was a little bit bigger. So Tammy, would you be able to make sure you check? Like, it's hard for me to see the chat. Would yeah. you be able to monitor that for yeah. me? Yeah, well, Nicole has a little comment right in here and she says that you will probably like the book Brown is Beautiful. Oh, yes. And I have actually have seen it. I can actually, um, what I can do, um, I can give Tammy some of the titles of books that I have done workshops on. Um, and maybe something that you might want to consider in your library. And I can always share some resources of things that I have done with those particular books. So, um, you know, you can have them in your pocket uh, in case one of the teachers at your school um, is interested in something like that. So um, this book, Anywhere Artists, in spare delightful text and illustration, an exuberant young artist looks deeply at the, wo at the world around her and makes art from found objects. This um, springly book uh, celebrates creativity and will inspire readers to find art all around them, unleash their imaginations and invent their own artistic creations. So let's, let's take a little bit of a look. If you have this book, let's open it up right now and um, take a look at some of the beautiful pages with inside of it. What I love about this book is kind of like this, it's illustrated. So the artist has kind of drawn this character, which is the little girl that we're going to follow her journey. And then they've actually incorporated these natural resources, these, these things called collage from nature. So I'm going to show you some of these activities. So obviously it just starts with her. I am an anywhere artist. And it kind of goes into her journey, right? Like I said, I'm not going to read the whole thing. But here's a really beautiful page. So in this page here, she goes, I am a forest artist. And what she's done here is she's actually used collage, like natural collage, along with the illustration that she's created of, her, of this character. So what's beautiful about this is that she does it in different unique ways throughout the book. So like this one, I am a beach artist. She's actually used sand to kind of create this kind of, um, this almost looks like, um, um, what do you call sandpaper kind of feel like you almost want to touch it, even though you can't feel it, it kind of gives you the idea that there's a lot of texture in this. And I can show you how to do this uh, using sand or dirt in your collage. Here's a couple of other beautiful pages. Like I said, she finds these objects within nature. And then she incorporates drawing alongside of it. Let me see if I can find a couple of other good pages. Yeah, so here, photography of like found logs from the beach. I use driftwood, making it stand tall to cast along fingered shadows over my art. So it almost seems like it's a hand. I am a rain artist. I'll skip a couple of pages here and look at this beautiful piece. I squish oozy mud into silly shapes. And I'm going to just show you how to do this, something like this a little bit later. I lie on the grass and make art inside my head. The clouds are my paints. My imagination is my brush. Here, it's different shapes that you can see from clouds. So this is actually even another cool project all by itself in the different shapes that the clouds make. 
Oh, I think this is the last page. Yeah, so this is the last page here. So like I said, like I'm not gonna spend too much time go over the book, but if you have it, for sure take a look. So I wanna show you some lessons that uh, I was inspired by when looking at this book. Oh yeah, the magical yet. Yeah, like I can always send those resources, claymates. And like I said, I have a couple of other ones that I can I can send your way. So first thing I want to talk about though is what is collage, which is clearly what's actually being used in this book. So the term collage is used to describe the process of creating art uh, work by combining a variety of different elements to create a new piece of art that conveys its own message. You can use materials such as fabric, paper, photo, wood. Some artists even make collages out of materials that could otherwise be thrown away, like magazines, newspaper, past artwork. Um, I know most of you in the good old days, I don't think that this happens anymore because now we have digital magazines. But before, remember when you used to have magazines in your library? Where was the first place you took your magazines to? The art teacher. Yes. Right? The art teacher will love these because magazines, is, I have like a giant stash of magazines here. Um, and actually my favorite magazines are like National Geographic. What's cool about National Geographic magazines, especially the ones that were printed before 1980, they were actually, they're printed inkjet, which is not a bubble jet, uh, not, I'm sorry, not, not a laser. So what's really cool is that you can actually rip the ink from the paper from the National Geographic. So I can actually teach you at the end of class, at the end of this workshop, if you want me to teach you how to remove the ink from a National Geographic using a packing tape, I can actually show you. It's called a photo transfer. So you're transferring the photo from the paper onto the tape, but it can only be done with magazines that are prior 1985, I believe something like that is whenever um, laser technology kind of took over. I've, I've had some friends be successful with it afterwards, but old magazines are the way to go when you want to do some really cool collage stuff. Um, let's go back. Do, you um, still, do you even have any left? Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> I have a giant stack. I have like I like a couple of boxes full of them. I like treasure them. <laughs> um, so, uh, so for example, like I said, pieces of magazines, newspaper, past artwork. A, a lot of the kids will throw their art to the recycling bin. And I'm like, guys, what are you doing? Like, take it, rip, rip it, like do something with it. What can you do with these beautiful images that you've created? So pieces of collage are typically glued or fastened to a backing of some sort. Obviously, you know, this is probably what most of you will, will use when you're doing collage. I particularly like to use this. This is called acrylic medium. Um, it is a little bit more expensive for sure. It's always cheaper to go this way, but acrylic medium, it's pretty much acrylic paint with no color. So it's like colorless acrylic paint, which allows you to create a much nicer surface when you're doing collage. Um, I can actually show you what that looks like um, after I finish a little bit of this. Um, oh yeah, if the lights turn off here, everything is sensor. So if I'm not moving, the lights will turn off. Just let me know. Um, so some collages are strictly two-dimensional while other collages obviously have three-dimensional elements. So you know what? I'm actually gonna go and show you. I have my sketchbook right here. Let me just quickly go get it. Okay, so here are the kind of things that acrylic medium can do. So this is one of my sketchbooks. It's it's pretty fat. I usually like I have different sketchbooks for different things. This is it's more like a visual journal. I I kind of this this one I like to have like themes for my sketchbook. The theme for this sketchbook is I have a cover here for women who do too much. Like I'm a little bit of a workaholic. So um so I kind of wanted to focus this sketchbook. It's all collage in here. And each page was kind of inspired by a quote, right? So what I mean by using things like R, like, so I'll give you an example. Like in this page, I used acrylic medium. I did a tape transfer and then I took bags of tea 
I ripped the bags and I used the tea inside along with the acrylic medium and I glued it down to my sketchbook. So it actually has a really nice smell. So every time I open this book, I have like, I have the smell of the tea and each page has a quote that inspired me to do this page. I got, a, I got one really good one here. I'm gonna show you this one here. So, and I use wire. I don't know if you can see the wire. It's actually literally wire on it. And the quote that I used for this page was chaos in our lives creates, um, sorry, chaos in our lives teaches us how to, how to be flexible. Sophia, uh, can I like, recommend turning off the slideshow for a minute so we can see your book in the larger screen? Oh, of course. <laughs> Yeah, I forgot. I realized that there was some. Um, is there a way that I can do two cameras on here or no? I don't believe so. <laughs> no. I just have to switch. I, I switched you to, I was trying to fiddle with the uh, video bits. So when you have your video on, it will show you. I feel like if I had like another computer with my, I have two cameras here just in case, but um, I find that when I usually do that, I think I have two computers and I literally logged in on two different things. But so let me show you. So this is what I did. So this is collage. This is collage using acrylic medium. So there was in this period, like I said, in this book, this is the title of this book. So it's just a, a visual journal and it's called uh, For Women Who Do Too Much. And each page kind of has a quote that inspired me to do this work. But um, but here you see, and there's a couple here where I've actually used natural elements. Where I, so I, that's why I, let, I like using acrylic medium because acrylic medium allows me the ability to do that. So here's tea. So this one has tea. Like you can actually feel the tea. There's one, I was washing dishes and I was multitasking and I broke the, the, like the glass, like the, like the cup. So I then I basically took a hammer to it. I don't know if you can see the like the texture, but I took a hammer to the mug and I shattered all of the ceramics and I glued it down on my sketchbook. So I used the quote doing like doing too much can, I mean, it's, it's been a while since I can something about breaking and doing too many dishes. So then I took that dish and then I literally collaged this onto my sketchbook. So that's, you know, that's what I love about this kind of thing. Here's another quote on chaos. I use melted crayon. So you can have so much fun when you're doing these sort of things, and especially with nature. I gotta show you how I actually, there was like a giant spider that I found while I was working one day. And I felt like I found it like right here on the wall behind my head. I squished it and then I took the spider and I actually glued it on my sketch. I have to just find which page that was in, but when I find it, I'll show it to you. So visual journaling is a lot of fun. And this kind of like, and I mean, in so many ways, this is kind of, oh, well, here it is. So here's the spider. I don't know if you can see it. It's right there, right here. It was huge. So I literally glued it down once it was dead with acrylic medium. So here, I'm gonna just show you one last page. So here is like me doing all of the house cleaning in my house. I emptied my vacuum. And I took all the dirt and then I glued the dirt from the vacuum cleaner onto this page. And there's a picture of my house in the back, which I did a photo transfer from. And then I layered all of the stuff. I mean, it's, hard, it's really hard to tell on camera. So here's, a, here's what kind of the last picture I wanna finish on. This is me using natural, natural um, collage. So this is like leaves. I have some dirt that I put down here. I have grass. So I have grass clippings and everything. And then I kind of did a collage. The only way to do this, glue isn't going to work for this kind of thing. The only way you can do this is if you use this stuff right here, which is acrylic medium. Not a topic, but we're gonna get focus back, focus back, I'll back to sharing my lesson. And then we'll kind of start kind of doing some of these kind of things. Sure. Am I back? Am I back on there? Can yes. you see me? Yeah, okay, perfect. So these are all the different types of materials. Like I said, you can either do two-dimensional, which are super flat, or you can do the three-dimensional, which is kind of what we're going to be doing today. And you don't even have to glue stuff down. So this is another, another thing that we're going to look at. So the first lesson that I want to show you is just imaginative play 
anywhere art is with mud. So this is the best time, the best season to kind of get out there with the classes. After reading this beautiful book, go outside and go make some art with just dirt, especially if you have the little guys. And don't be fooled. I've actually taken high school kids out to draw with dirt and they had a, so much fun. So um, this could actually be adapted for absolutely any level. So when we talk about creativity prompts, we really mean is we are providing a spark or a material that might invite new ideas or processes to be created. Our modern world has little patience for being messy and getting super dirty. I, that's the thing in my class. The kids, like, they don't want to touch anything. They don't want to get dirty. But once you take them outside of the classroom and you take them outside, it's amazing how much more flexible they're willing to be. So here are some material ideas. You're going to need dirt. You're going to need water. You're going to need some, uh, some plastic tubs that you can, like sour cream, yogurt containers, anything like that. Paint brushes, sticks, broken pencils if you have them. Obviously, you're going to need a big roll of paper uh, or canvas, newspaper, whatever surface you actually want to paint on with mud. So uh, the project would be mud and any other organic art making materials are easily accessible. You can literally right now, if you look outside for most of the province, most of us are inundated with either rain or snow. Um, so you can go in the backyard, the sidewalk, garden. This art making is simple and low prep way to invite children to be creative and independently explore the outdoors while allowing them from space to figure out how to make best use of the materials. Another thing you can do is if your school has a fence, you can always go and like, like, and I can paint with dirt on the fence because eventually it's going to rain and it's going to wash out. Um, so yeah, so it's basically an amazing way of exploration. So the best way to do it is if you literally take a, like a, like a little yogurt container, you go and find some dirt, you fill it with water, and then you try to make it as murky and like soft as possible. Then you can take a brush and then you can literally go crazy and start doodling. So you can do it independently, which each child kind of does their own work, or you can do a collaborative mural. And this is my favorite, like the third picture in the middle, that's kind of like a collaborative work where all the kids get to do that. I love the one on the on the right, which is the handprint. So you get your handful of mud and then you make handprints of mud. So it's just using a natural resource to, to do natural art. Let's move along here. I was like, you forget we're all teacher librarians. I don't know about everyone else, but I'm like, oh, mud? On yeah, I know, right? But that is, I, I, it's not even about that. Like, I teach art, and it was hard for me to let go and have to go out there to play with mud. <laughs> but it's fun. The ki all the kids had so much fun doing it. So reminder, the mud painting doesn't have to be pretty right? All yogurt tubs and Tupperware, mix your dirt, simply add water and you go in there for a messy adventure. You can do paper, sidewalk, fences, boxes, or whatever, side of your house, in the school, whatever it is. If you don't have paint brushes, you don't need them. You can do them with sticks. Um, so you can literally go and find the stick out and then they can actually be using the stick. So they have absolutely zero supplies. You can literally make art absolutely anywhere. Um, Let's see, let's keep moving on here. So uh, become an anywhere artist with loose parts. So thinking like an anywhere artist encourages us to find and make art from just about anything, absolutely anywhere. I'm just gonna keep moving this little screen here. Here's some other ideas to inspire art making in your school grounds, gardens, or at the beach, in the forest, or wherever you guys are going. So here are some examples of different things that kids have done putting together natural resources that they find on the ground to create art. I mean, look at this, like the one on the far bottom right is one of my favorites where they take, they took like a, like a, obviously a ball of mud, clay, whatever, and they made it into a ball. But even the way it was photographed, um, you know, it, it was beautifully done. And like I said, all of these are kind of creations made by the things that you find outside in the forest or even in our backyards, like in our schools. Donnie just says she loves this and thank you for the inspiration. It's so much fun. I, I mean, I, I know, like I said, a lot of people, when I taught this lesson, everyone's like, oh, my class isn't going to like, I have grade 10s. 
uh, or whatever. I teach high school, eight to 12. I can tell you right now, I took my grade 12s out and they all did this, right? And I actually find that they get more creative with the things that they do the older they get. Um, they might not want to get too dirty, but they will go and find things that'll work together. So you have collaboration. So you can, they can do this in groups. So they're all collaborating to find materials. You can even add color theory. So for example, okay, this group is going to find red leaves. This group is going to find green leaves. This group is going to go find something blue, whatever you do, you can, you don't even have to do this with natural stuff. You can literally do it even with recyclables. You got to go around the school and find uh, this many you can do it with photography go take your you could take your cameras and take photos of anything you see that's blue so there's so many extensions of things you can do you can do that like you take your phones you take your photos you print out those photos in your photocopier and then you rip the photos and then you create collage out of the ripped photos that you took from around your school Okay, so that's one lesson that was actually one and a half. Here's another lesson that's also really fun. I've done this with primary level, but I'm pretty sure you can do this. And I, I have an extension of something you can do as a secondary. Um, leaf collages, super fun. I've had a lot of fun teaching this lesson with my students. They're always amazed by the magic of what happens when you put leaves together to create a picture. Um, obviously, start by collaging many leaves with your students. Have gloves available for those that are sensitive. I, I can tell you right now, there's so many kids that, you know, or you tell them to be prepared. Hey, by the way, we're all going to get dirty. If you don't want to get dirty, bring gloves. If not, then you just get it ready to wash your hands. Um, so trust me on this one. The kids are going to have super fun. You're going to want to do this on a thick surface. So whenever you're gluing anything down, you want your paper to have a little bit of weight. So photocopy paper sometimes is not really the best option. So project, obviously is uh, go for a nature walk and visit the trees around your school and carefully collect leaves. Perhaps consider just looking for leaves that are on the ground. I hate it when kids rip it from trees. I always talk about how we are trying to reuse the things that are kind of have already fallen down. So this is a really good way of like even talking about um, the preservation of our, of our nature. Um, make students collect different size leaves, especially small ones, because they become details in a much in um, such as scales, dots, etc. Once we get back to the class and you have everyone sort their leaves, you can give the kids an old magazine with their name on it and you can have them flatten them. So if you really want to create a two dimensional, um, two dimensional uh, collage, you're going to want to have the leaves as flat as possible. So I know that when we were younger, we probably put them inside your favorite book, but I don't recommend you do that. Obviously, anything you find outside still has water and your book will be damaged. So I always say, use an old magazine, stick your leaves in there, and then put really heavy books on top of that and leave it for like a week or two, right? And just forget that they're there and let them get as flat and dried as possible. And then once that, then you can kind of bring them and then you can create your collage a couple of weeks later. There's a comment that said uh, they read, they usually read their leaf man and do it every year with their young kids. You bet. I'm going to introduce the leaf man a little bit later. That's actually another one of my favorite books. So then have students take out all of the leaves and start doing a practice run before you start gluing stuff. You know, this will help them organize their thoughts and make any changes. The rule is there's no cutting of the leaves allowed. So you have to use the leaves as a whole. So whatever you collect is what you can use. And then you just have to be really creative in how you put it together. But you can already see how amazing these collages are, are turning out. It's, it's kind of amazing how, um, how creative kids can be when you give them um, a different way of creating art. Like you're, you're using the things that you already have. You know, you're not like your, your, your creativity is almost like puzzling. How do you puzzle these things together? So here are some collages that the kids did. And it's all leaves. And with this one is just actually just glue. So you can, uh, what you do is you have your white glue, you add a little bit of water to make sure it's nice and soft. Don't use your favorite brushes. Any time that you're dealing with glue, you wanna use your kind of old crappy brushes. Glue is one of those things that will kind of ruin and damage your brush. So you kind of wanna keep a set of brushes just for gluing. Any questions about that guy? It's always fun. So here we go, let's step it up a little bit. So now we're gonna do stuff with like, particularly like doing your collages outside of, um, not in the classroom, but outside. 
So what you do is like, I have the kids kind of create an image in the, I, I give the kids a piece of paper and I have them create an image using felts. Then we take that image and then we go outside with that and we finish the collage by using the nature that's already found outside. So making a collage is fun activity for students at all levels. All you need is some paper, recycled cardboard, whatever. I hate to waste anything. So recycling, reusing materials is basically the best way to go. Um, so here's another one. So first students need to draw their image, their design, whatever they're going to choose, right? Um, or you can even do this using words. So it doesn't even have to be a drawing. It could actually be them writing something. Either it's a poem or it's, you know, or a statement or quote or anything like that. And now they got to go out into the, into the outside area of the school and find imagery that's going to emphasize the subject that you want to focus on. So this is a lot of fun. Uh, for the younger grade students can draw all types of kinds of wildlife, birds, to kind of keep it simple. For the older grades, you can have them go into fairies, pirates, knights, dragons, robots. For the even older kids, you can have them write some, some poetry, uh, short story, really short story, and then see where that can go from there. The possibilities are endless for this project. So it really all comes down to photography because this project is only, it's like they can't keep this. Like this is literally, this is it. The photo is your evidence and that's that's all. And then you, then after that, you, the, the, the art is gone because you don't have those, um, those natural elements anymore. So I have them go like here, you have a variety. You can even put boundaries saying, hey, you know what? You can't use the same. You have to try to find different things. You can use leaves, stones, grass, bark, fallen fruit, whatever, flowers. Like I said, I avoid collecting wildflowers, ripping leaves or branches down. Like I always, for me, that's always a no. Whatever's already out is what we use. So arrange the materials on top. You can even change it around. You have your original drawing, but then you change your materials around so you can actually create multiple collages with the same picture that you've created. I love these two, these are so much fun. You can always talk about different habitats. So if you're gonna be focusing on that, especially for the elementary level, um, you can explore different textures. You can change the color of the paper if you like. There's, like I said, there's so many different variations. Um, you can talk about why natural things are different colors. Uh, for example, flowers are bright color to attract pollinators and so on. So you can actually literally bridge this with other types of learning that are happening in your classroom. Or if, even if like you're a librarian, so if you're if you're facilitating um, that kind of uh, project, then you can even do an extension where you kind of do a project like this. So when the students have finished, they can actually, if they have the materials, they can glue them down or they just take a photo and they digitally share. So this could be like an amazing little exhibition that you can do and share with your school and put it on the school website. Any questions on that guy? I'm pretty sure a lot of you have done this before, which is the plastic sun catcher. It's always fun. Uh, I'm not gonna get in too much of this because I'm, I, you know, I, I would guess many of you have already done this before. Where you, but instead of a lot of the times when my son did this when he was in grade two, he did it with like tissue paper, but actually going outside to nature and collecting things from, from nature and creating a plastic sand catcher, um, sticky back plastic to cut into identical shapes. And obviously you collect your materials inside and then you glue both sides together. So anything from grass, bark, or fallen flowers. And then the leaf people. So this is somebody had already mentioned this book. It's super fun. Uh, inspired by the books Everywhere Artists and Leaf Man by um, Lewis Elert. Make leaf people is super easy and creative uh, activity for students of all ages. So I know some of you have already kind of done uh, something like this. So this is a, a great step to doing the activity like this and then reading um, everywhere artists and be inspired in a different way. So obviously collect your, your, collect your leaves, get everything ready to go, read everywhere artists and leaf men together. 
and introduce the concepts of putting uh, natural resources in one place. Uh, take your time by examining the way the author uses leaves and other natural objects to create images. So we can talk about what we see, what we don't see, what are the essential parts. If you're creating the people, what are the key parts? What do we need? We need a head, we need a torso. So for the little kids, you can do stuff like that. Go for a short walk, making sure you pick a spot where several types of leaves can be found. Keeping the walk short will allow for plenty of time left over for creating your leaf people. Now, obviously you can do this collaboratively. You can have all the kids create their own people and like all together. So it can be like a collaborate uh, project or you can do it all in one, each and the kid using their one. You can talk about shapes, colors, and all of these things. This is the perfect, I find this project is it's most successful in September, October. That's when you're gonna have the most um, uh, leaf color change. Sometimes you have it in the spring. In the spring, you'll have more flowers. But if you're just focusing on leaves, then for sure, something that you want to do kind of close to September, October. So obviously, find a reasonably flat spot, protect it from the wind, and start creating your guys. So this was so much fun. Look at the eyes on this one. It has like a, it has like a total Canadian feel to it. <laughs> Any questions about that guy? I know, like I said, uh, maybe the people who have done this book before can can uh, tell us about their experiences with it. Mm, this is a good time to unmute and chat if you want to. Yeah, we are a quiet group. <laughs> okay, that's okay. It's after school, it's always tiring. Um, okay, so the last thing is um, going back to getting a little bit dirty uh, and doing a little bit of mud. So specifically, accidentally, yeah. So no, no. So that was, I think I accidentally might have like double copied the slide. So ignore the slide. So the next couple of things that I do want to review. So here is a couple of other books that maybe your library uh, may be interested in, in, in having, right? Um, all of these books focus on collage. Uh, I am pretty sure you can get all of these books on Amazon. I'm pretty sure. Um, I know that I, that's probably where I bought some of them, either that or Indigo. So the first one that I absolutely love is called Collage Workshop for Kids, Rip, Snip, Cut, and Create with Inspiration from Eric Carl's Museum. Um, Extraordinary Things to Cut Out and Collage, the Collage Idea Book, the Collage Workbook, How to Get Started and Stay Inspired. And the last one, I have to move my little screen here, I can't see, is cut and glue activity books where you can probably find anywhere. Um, I have a couple more things. Here's some more resources for you. Here's another, a, a few more books, um, play how it shapes the brain, open imagination and invigorate the soul. Look what I did with the leaf. Um, here's another book to, um, to add to your collection and leaf man. Uh, like you said, somebody kind of already had mentioned that book. And here's a few articles. I mean, I also touched a couple of articles that you may want to look at uh, when kind of, you know, working with kids regarding this. It's pretty advanced reading, but it's more for like the professional, just for self-knowledge. Um, and uh, yeah, here's a few other things. Here's a few more lessons. You can do printmaking with nature. So when we go back, let me see if I can go back. Hold on one second. Let me see if let me escape from this guy. And I want to go back to this. Oh, am I still presenting or no? Did my no. power? No. Okay. So okay. I'm gonna get bring it back and I'll show you. Oh man, I even lost like the whole zoom thing. Here we go. I have like 10,000 screens open right now. Okay. Um, let's go back to this guy. Let's go back to here. So now you want to step it up. Let me share this to much older kids. You can do stamping. So what's really cool about stamping, especially when you're doing something like this. So let's say you've done something like this. You can have a brayer, which is a roller. And you apply ink to your roller. You can apply ink on your collage right? You put a piece of paper on it, you rub your hand on it and you peel it. And then you'll have a beautiful design uh, 
that's kind of made from the ink and all of the kind of texture that um, from the leaves. So that's even different th ways that you can even uh, adapt the project to be like to focus on more on artistic technique. So um, there's so many different ideas and so many different things you can do with this. Um, like I said, I put it at the end because I don't know all the different grade levels of everybody else. You can do colographs. Colographs are actually, I can actually show you what a colograph is. Um, actually, just give me one second. I cannot go get it right. So holographs is kind of like, we call it like the really um, cheap way of making printmaking. Let me stop sharing here so you can see my camera. So holographs are these things. So it's like, a, like I usually use like a piece of mat board. Um, how I collect the mat board is I actually go uh, like to frame stores and like, you know, the middle of the mat board that, that the frame stores have that they kind of throw in the garbage. I usually go and collect whatever they have left over. So I don't really pay for this. And then I have the kids glue down using acrylic medium. All these natural things, well, kind of natural. There's like spaghetti here, there's grass, there is like toilet paper. There's all of these things to create textures. Here's one that hasn't been printed too much. You can see I use yarn, like the kids use like yarn and they glue it down really well. There's like lentils over here. There's all these different things you can do. Here's another one. So this one is done with a lot of tissue paper and toilet paper, and then you use acrylic medium on it. Then you take your brayer, which is your roller. You apply your ink. It's water soluble. You put your ink on it. You... You can put like your paper, you rub it really, really hard. You have to do this really quickly because you don't want your ink to, and then you peel your paper and then you get your design on your paper. Uh, I've done this a lot with nature. So here are some really cool holographs that I made from leaves and things that I found. So with this guy, I didn't even use ink. I used watercolor. So I glued my leaves down on the paper. I took watercolor, watercolor, I like painted it on with watercolor. I put my paper down, I rubbed it really, really well and I peeled it and then I got an image, which is so cool. Like look at the beautiful textures that that does leaves. So you can create amazing stories with this as well. Here's another one, very similar, different colors. Sometimes, I mean, the most successful way of doing this is by using a uh, printmaking ink where you can buy, it's not hard to get. You can probably get it on Amazon or um, at Opus Art Supply Stores. I'm pretty sure they're throughout, they're throughout BC. And um, you get the ink because the ink stays wet longer than watercolor or acrylic. So what you do is you put the ink on here. You like make sure you put it in really well. I usually use a brush when I do that. And then, like I said, and then I, I put the paper down, I rub it and I peel it. And it gives you this kind of beautiful effect. So this is always a lot of fun to do. These are called holographs. It's just it's the, the cheapest and freest way to do collage, like to do art, because you cost you. I mean, for me, it costs you no money other than the paper and the mat board. You can probably also use cardboard. It's really important. I don't know if you notice when you're doing stuff like this. Not only paint on the front your acrylic medium, but you got an acrylic medium in the back. What I mean, these are pretty old. I mean, I did these like 15 years ago, but. Um, what happens is that cardboard will start to curl when you only paint one side. So you have to make sure you paint one side and then you paint the other. So that makes sure that the balance of the cardboard stays even. Otherwise you're gonna get these weird kind of, uh, kind of like, you know, you'll notice your cardboard starts to like curl up. That's how you kind of avoid doing those sort of things. So Sophia, yes. I'm not, well, I'm, I don't know how to do this. Like, do you like use acrylic medium and you pour it over and you kind of like. Yeah, so what I can do is I can actually do a couple of demos right now. Okay. <laughs> so, so I'm going to set up my station. So if you have any questions, this is the time. Ask away right now while I set up my other camera. I'm going to show you, I'm going to set up a camera that looks down so that you can kind of see what I'm doing and how I'm going to do it. I'm going to use both things. I'm going to use glue and I'm going to use acrylic so I can show you what the difference is. And I also, what I did before, I collected a bunch of fun stuff. See, so 
we're going to try to do some stuff with this. Great. Because I have no idea how to do this. Um, in the meantime, I thought maybe I would do a draw, like a mid-session draw. I think that seems like a great idea to me. Um, unfortunately, everyone has weird names on here. I mean, not everyone, but some people. Some people do not have their names on here. Can you change your name so that I can add you to a spin wheel, name wheel spinner thingy to see who wins a book? Or you know what? I'm going to find a number one. I'm going to do the number generator and I'm just going to count from the participant list. That seems like an easier method for me. One moment. Let me spin. That's me. Sorry. Sorry. So does anybody have any questions here while I set up? Oh, I'm just um, trying to do a, a, a number spin. So we'll see who wins a book right now. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Okay. Oh, that's you, Jane. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I I'm just going to do a number spin. I think that would probably be easier. So let me figure out how to do this because I usually I have someone else do this part. Okay. Let me just get out of here, move my camera back a little bit. Okay, I'm just gonna spin one right now. It's a random one to 25. Oh shoot, it has music. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna spin it. <laughs> Number 16, I'm gonna count from here. Who is number 16? One, two, three. Oh man, I got, you know what? Hold on, let me get rid of the chat because, okay. Ah, E. Weber. I don't know who that is. So. E. Weber, you are a winner, number 16. And um, if you can give me your address or direct message me your address, I will send you a copy of Anywhere Artist. How are you doing? Do you have to be in attendance to, uh, to win? Pretty much. You need to be here the whole time, but we're doing a mid, mid draw, so that's fine. So we have okay. four more to go. That'll be at the end. Sweet. Okay. Well, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty much all set up. I, I got my USB camera ready to go here. Great. A little miniature document camera. It's great for you an art teacher because you need the kids to see you. I always say protect your surface. You know, these things are cheap. I bought this uh, at the Dollarama. It's like a big giant blue sheet, but I cut it down into small squares so that the kids you know, can just use it to protect their their table. This is essential because this stuff that we're doing is pretty messy. Okay, so let's get started. I'm gonna just do kind of multiple things on one page. So let's show you. And then if anybody wants a specific demo of some kind, let me know. Okay, uh, Marilyn says, it would be cool to combine this kind of art with book folding for books that you need to discard. Like, oh my goodness, I have like I've done this kind of thing with like um, um, book uh, alteration. So like I've actually one of my sketchbooks is an old book that I altered. I don't have it here, actually. Oh, you know what? I might have it here, but I may have to just look for it afterwards. But I don't know how it's going to work, but we'll try this. I don't think my camera is going to fit with this on here, but this is good enough, I think. Okay, so first thing is I have my surface. I'm wearing gloves just because I cut myself earlier and I don't wanna have any kind of problems with that. I'm gonna use a palette. You know, you can use, you know, you don't have to use anything fancy. You can probably use a piece of cardboard. I do have some paint. So in case I wanna kind of do some painting, by the way, this is the best way 
to store paint and have the kids save paint. This is acrylic, what I'm using. Uh, they're just old food containers. It's kind of the way to go. Okay, I have my water, I have my glue, and I have my medium, and I have my, oh, look at that. I even have a bug in my leaves. That's awesome. I'm probably going to not kill him. Okay. So the first thing I want to teach you is how to collage something like this. So I have this leaf and I want to collage it on my paper. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use acrylic medium because it's probably something that you kind of are less familiar with. Like I said, acrylic medium is the best for this kind of thing. The way this works is that it's actually a brand new bottle, so I should probably open it. So now they have shiny, this one is matte. Oops, it's a matte acrylic medium. I prefer, I prefer the, sh I prefer like the semi-gloss, but this is what I got to use today. So you place it on your palette. Now, remember anytime that you're using acrylic paint, if you've had that experience in the past, please remember wear an apron. Acrylic is pretty evil. And once it gets onto your clothes, it's almost impossible to get out. So here's my medium, here is my leaf. Now with medium, you do not need to use any water. Carol's so, asking how much does the acrylic medium cost? You know what? Like you can buy like cheaper brands. Like this one is from School Specialty. Um, I think you can buy, I, they, they really do range. Um, acrylic medium, I don't want to lie, it's not cheap. Um, it's clear acrylic, but you can buy this, diff, like cheaper brands that are probably going to be cheaper. Like Opus, a thing like this is about 30 bucks, but this lasts a long time. Uh, and I use mine, like I would say almost every single day. If you have no budget, like I said, this works just as great. Like it, it's really nothing wrong with this. The only difference is that I can wash this easier than I can wash this, right? The binders are different, right? So um, I find that every time I use glue, it's a bigger mess and it, it pretty much damages my brushes. So what I do is I have these brushes that are like super old and I have them just dedicated just for glue. Like, it's like, they're already so hard. Um, so I dedicate these brushes just for gluing. So the first thing you have to do with anything when you're doing collage is you have to actually put medium on the paper first. Now, the difference also between medium and glue is the medium dries super fast. So you have about five minutes, not even, I would say even like two, three minutes to work. So I apply my medium underneath and then I apply my leaf. And the way I do this is I hold it down. I already applied acrylic medium. And then I take the top and I start to squish it. Now this leaf is pretty dry, but, and you can kind of see what that kind of effect looks like. I don't know if I can zoom up here, but can you see okay? Fine. Okay. Yes. So you might need to put some a little bit more underneath. Like I'm, I'm also not probably using the best paper. I'm just using photocopy paper for this demo. I could not find any Bristol that was cut the size I needed, but I would probably want to use Bristol board on this because your, your paper might disintegrate. Like in my sketchbook, I'm using a mixed media paper, which is a 60 pound paper, it's a little bit thicker. So then you start to slowly apply underneath and apply on top, putting pressure. Underneath and on top. Underneath and on top and you start to see it's kind of squishing. And then as I go back and I squish them more. Uh, Marilyn's asking, is it a kind of a kind of like Mod Podge, Mod Podge? Yes, it's a Mod Podge is a glue. So it's still, it's more like a glue, but yes, it's like a Mod Podge is between glue and acrylic medium. It's kind of in between. So yes, I mean, I would say that Mod Podge could be cheaper to use. It, it's just more like a glue, but you could do all of these things that I'm doing with that for sure. The only thing I believe is Mod Podge eventually will turn yellow. But if you don't care about that, then it doesn't matter. Where acrylic won't. Acrylic medium won't. It'll just stay clear. 
Now mine is not clear, obviously, because it's dirt. So I'm getting this kind of brown feel to it. I'm just taking all my leftovers. So here we go. So, and I'm doing a pretty rushed job. If I was doing this for my own art, I would probably take more time and be a little bit more sensitive with my leaves because I do want to keep the integrity of my leaf. But for the sake of time, I've had to be a little bit, a little bit faster here. So as you notice, I'm kind of now my, my leaf is pretty flat. So now I can do other fun things. Like, so here is my stack of stuff, right? So I brought a bunch of different things from outside. What I want to do is I want to actually use some dirt. So let me show you what I do with dirt. So I take my dirt on my palette with my acrylic medium, and then I mix it. Now I'm going to need more acrylic medium for sure. Let me just get some more here, hold on. Acrylic medium is also really watery. because, it's, Like I said, it's, it's literally like acrylic paint. Now a really good acrylic medium, a really good quality will be really thick. Uh, this one, like I said, is cheaper, but this is kind of creates kind of like this beautiful dirt paint. And you can take that dirt and then you can start to add to your art. And you're literally painting with dirt. For, for the fun of creating textures, you can create, like, let's say I want to use a little bit of, yeah, I want to add a little bit of paint onto there. I'm adding a little bit of yellow into my dirt. <laughs> so now I can just change the color so it becomes a little bit more contrast. Might actually add a little bit of red, probably there better. So you can kind of start seeing. So I'm literally just painting with dirt. A couple of other fun things that you can use with collage is tissue paper. Tissue paper is my favorite. Every time that there's a birthday party at someone and I attend, I always collect their tissue. I'm like, don't throw that out, I'll take it. So I'm always collecting tissue paper. You literally rip it a little bit. And I take little bits of tissue and then I incorporate them into my collage. So what I love about tissue paper is that it just creates this beautiful. So in the in the in the sketchbook that I show you, I use a lot of tissue paper, like a lot. <laughs> I usually just like using white, but I'll use any color, whatever I get. And you can create like some really thick areas with tissue. How long does it take to dry? Like, well, this thick, like if you saw what, how thick this was here in this area, probably I would leave it overnight. But this is already drying. You can already see it drying over here. Mm -hmm. So acrylic medium dries pretty quickly. At least the top layer of the of the work will dry pretty much in the next not in the next 15, 20 minutes. But I wouldn't be putting it in your backpack because the inside of it, remember you need to put, you need to apply acrylic underneath and then on top, you can do the same thing with glue. All you have to do is exactly what I'm doing with glue and water. If you want it to look, if you want it to have the same consistency, you're gonna be generous with the water. You wanna have, like I said, like with the camera, it's a little bit harder to tell kind of what's going on over here, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna get out, try to get a little bit of a close up for you. So now they start adding some even some more three dimensional stuff. So I've got these cool things here. All right, Janet's asking, do you have another palette with paint on it? Yeah, I do. Like I'm actually contaminated the paint. I wouldn't recommend that. I would all I would probably have another brush, take the paint from there and put it on my palette. Just for the sake of time, I'm kind of like contaminating it, but. So here's like literally like a 3D kind of uh, object with something like this. I would probably hold it on really tight like that, right? With this guy, I'm gonna probably need to pour. We call this pouring. And massage the acrylic medium. The acrylic medium dries, even though it looks white, it will dry clear. Okay. 
and it's pretty, um, I'm assuming, secure once it dries. Oh, yeah, it is solid. It's not coming out. It's like, remember, acrylic medium is a, a plastic binder. So there is plastic kind of happening around there. Okay, so let me just clean my hands and my water here. And I'll show you one other thing we can do. So now, like I told you, I have like this super fun magazine here, National Geographic, my favorite from the 1980s. I'm just gonna use anything for the sake of it. Here's a really beautiful page with water. I'm gonna rip that. And then I kind of really like this person. <laughs> so I'm just gonna like do something or even like this, this land with like, uh, there's just so many things you can do. Like I like this land too. So I'm gonna kind of take that. Something like a little bit more organic. So it's like not so uniform, I guess. It really all depends what your look is going for. And then I'm gonna probably, I might like collage it underneath here. I don't know, something like that. Put my dirt underneath, my acrylic medium. And using my picture. Like my acrylic medium is pretty dirty right now because I am, I have dirt on it, but it all depends. You don't have to have it dirty. Remember underneath, super important. Yes. Wow. Uh, what kind of uh, gloves do you use? I mean, I just use whatever. I mean, I buy a box of these just because um, I'm allergic to clay and I teach clay. So I have a box, but I reuse my gloves. Uh, probably dry these out and then use, reuse them again for the rest of the week. Mm. And uh, Donnie says it reminds her of an Eric Carl book. Beautiful. Oh yeah. I mean, this is pretty, I mean, I'm using pretty dark colors. I mean, I didn't let my, I didn't let my leaves dry. I picked it out like a half an hour before. So all of this can be planned. So it's brighter and nicer. Like this is pretty dark. Um, you could like go in with some beautiful color. Like if you want to add some brightness in here, you could, you can kind of add you know, like a little bit of color here if you want. Oh yeah, like he uses a lot. He did all, he did, has quite a few books that are kind of like this, right? He uses that idea of like, of this kind of collage aspect to it. <laughs> Nicole says, whatever gloves you find free in the first aid kit. <laughs> oh yeah, I know, but you know what though? They get mad at the office when I take their gloves. So I had to buy my own. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, they're just like, I like the black ones. That's just because I like black. I don't know. It's, I don't think they're any more special or unique than any other one. Yeah. Okay, so here are some things that are happening in here. Let's see what else we can teach you how to. Oh, you can even do, like I said, um, you can even like probably glue down these sort of things too. Like, look at this guy. It's like a twig. So I'm going to put that guy right there. Why not? That's interesting. And then so with the glue, you have to water it down with water. Oh, yeah. If you're going to use glue, you need to water it down. Okay. And you just attach away. Now with this, when you're doing this kind of thing, though, you're not going to want to move this guy because he's going to need some time to dry. Like what I would do with a stick like this is I would apply glue first and then I would acrylic medium the top of it. Like, I mean, this, this collage is pretty thick. Like you can't see how thick it is, but it's pretty thick. I'm afraid to pick it up because I don't think my paper can actually hold it. Mm. Let me see if I can bring my camera down that way in one second. I gotta wash my gloves. Cool. Well, it looks way better than what I would have made during that time period. All right, while she's gone, I'm gonna do another spin. Where's that wheel? Okay, let's see if I can actually show you. Let's see. Let's see what we can do here. Hmm, let's see how we can actually do this. Here. There you go. I don't know if you can see. Oh. Oh. That's interesting. Yeah, you can see the texture and layers on that one. Oh, yeah. Like... It, it, and it's probably not as, see, look at the tissue. Look what it does. You can use toilet paper, by the way. Toilet paper works amazing for this kind of thing right there. 
so this is pretty messy. I mean, obviously I would probably be a little bit more um, thorough with my, with my students. I probably take a little bit more time. This is my new camera, so I really don't know how to, oh, hold on, let me see if I can do this. There we go. I think that might help. There. I have to put a little bit of weight on here. <laughs> let me put my acrylic medium bottle on my, no, might not work. We tried. It's okay. All right. Uh, I just uh, spun the number wheel and it was number six and that's Angela Vaughn on my list. So Angela, you win. So please message me your address. So let's do another fun little thing. Like I talked to you about doing color transfers. So yeah, I mean, I think like tomorrow it's gonna look pretty good. Like, here we go, I can bring it up. So I'm gonna let that guy dry. So the next thing I wanna show you is how to do a photo transfer using tape. So the first thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need a water. Now, I, I, I suggest you just do this in the sink, but I don't have a sink nearby, so I'm gonna use this. Um, and then, well, you know what? I still really like this picture. I got this from the National Geographic. It's this guy floating in the water. I think it'll be kind of fun think, to kind of stick him in there. I'm gonna take away anything that I don't like really about this guy. I think that's pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my packing tape and for this, I'm going gloveless because I need a little bit more grip on this. So here's my picture. Here is the packing tape. It's just basic packing tape. What's really important about this is that you have to make sure that you, you um, I'll show you. So here, I'm gonna put the first one. Okay, I'm gonna put it on top of the picture. Now, super important that the next piece I cut, I overlap the tape. So don't put it right at the bottom, you need to overlap it. I'm gonna get a little close up so you can see what I mean by that. So if you look at the tape here, it's overlap. Otherwise, it's gonna fall apart. So you need to overlap the tape. So you can kind of see it on the edges a little bit actually here. You see that? Overlap. The next thing I'm gonna do, I'm happy with it. I make sure that it's right in there. I'm actually gonna now disintegrate the paper and only keep the ink. So I'm gonna soak it. So you do this with the water in the sink. So you can do it with cold water. I wouldn't do it with too much hot water because the hot water will kind of Okay, so then what you start doing in the sink, you start to slowly with my finger, do you see what I'm doing? It's like, you have to wait for the paper to really get wet. So it'll take a few seconds and then you start to feel it. Okay, and you start to feel that the paper starts to disintegrate. And I wanna help the paper disintegrate, so I'm gonna rub it. Like I said, this works usually better in the sink than when the water is flowing, but I can feel it it's slowly starting to happen. Yeah, I might take a little longer just because I don't have a sink, but I have done it in buckets before too. Just a little bit more time consuming. Like, oh, there it is. So you see how, I don't know if you can start to see it. See how there's the white is starting to appear. So I'm slowly starting to remove the paper. Here we go. So there you go. So there, see, you have to be gentle. So what you do is the paper will slowly start to disintegrate. And you start pulling the paper away. That's interesting. Very gently. So just massage it, keep it in the water and the water is better. Make sure that it's always wet. You can try with laser magazines, but I, I, they're hit and miss. I know for sure when you do these old ones, they works all the time. So now I've kind of removed the one layer of paper, which is the one side. So now that I'm down to just the one white, which is the base, the, the, the side that we want, I'm gonna start to remove that layer of paper. And I'm gonna go very slow. And if you look, if you see it, if you get a close up, you can actually see the paper disintegrate slowly. The more water, the better. But you wanna be gentle. It does take a little bit of time, but it's very, oh, do you see the bug that I brought from outside? It's right here. Just killed it, sorry. <laughs> can't see it it's out of the, the... oh no because it's dead now it's floating in our water right there <laughs> oh oh okay you seem to have fun with bugs 
I don't want to, but I mean, I collected this from outside. So that's kind of natural things gonna happen. So it starts to get super thin. It almost feels like I almost got the picture already. It feels like there's no paper. So, so here, I think that I got all the paper out. Like if you feel it, it's like, it feels like tape. Like it feels like you can't feel the paper. So the paper is pretty much, oh, it's a little bit of paper here. Now. So I've actually removed absolutely all the paper and all I'm left is with the ink. So this is just no paper. Literally, it's like, you see how it's almost transparent? Do you see the guy? Yes. So you can keep working it very slowly. And eventually, because this is a pretty dark picture, but if you do this with text, it's so cool because you only get the black text. It's actually so much fun. And you start to peel up here. There's still some, looks like there's still some paper in there, but very little bit left. So, I mean, perhaps this wasn't the best picture to choose because it's such a dark background, but it's become transparent. So the picture has become transparent. Oh, so what's left over is the ink. <laughs> so funny, my custodian is listening to music. I don't think she even notices that I am actually teaching a workshop. <laughs> okay, so all I'm left now, like now there's like literally no paper. Is just ink now. Okay, uh, Denise says that's pretty neat. And Jane was wondering, does it feel sticky where you're rubbing? No. Well, no. So yeah, here's another thing. Like you literally, like you, if you dry, you might have a little bit of stick right here in the tape part. Very little though. I would use acrylic medium to put this guy down. So I would then take my, see, you can actually see though in the water, this is all the paper that I was able to remove. I've done some really cool uh, photo classes before. Um, where I think you can actually, you can try to do it. If you have an inkjet printer at home, you can do it with that. I have done all these different kinds of things. So it's just, it's just kind of trial and error. You never know. So let's say I'm gonna take my picture and I wanna collage this as part, like maybe you wanna have like an identity photo part or they can, you know, this is pretty advanced stuff, but they can even have their photos. Then you can actually collage their photos as part of it. So maybe I wanna do something that's like, this guy's not wet yet, so I might just do something like, like that underneath. But you can actually, because the photo is transparent, you can actually see the stuff from behind, behind this, behind this water. Just so cool. So here we're gonna just glue that guy down. Let's get this. Let's put a little bit of more acrylic medium on here. Let's say I wanna use a little bit more tissue because I don't like the edges of the tape. So I'm gonna just put a little bit of tissue there. Make it a little bit less subtle, a little more subtle. So we so can't really see it from, well, I can't really see it from the camera. So does that, so you can actually see through that yeah, image. You can actually see through the image. You can actually see the leaves and stuff from behind. Oh, okay. That is cool. Yeah, that's the only thing when you're in a camera, can't see it. It's okay, I can come downstairs. Yeah, I can come and check it out. <laughs> yeah, so here, I'm gonna put a little bit more here, maybe. I don't know, there's just so many things you can do. Tissue paper is the best, I love tissue paper. Like I said, if you don't have this, toilet paper works great. Toilet paper disintegrates faster, so the only thing is what I like about tissue paper, it has a little bit more subs, like more grip to it. It, it doesn't, it doesn't get, it doesn't rip as, as fast. So you can actually shape it like you want. Okay, so this would be kind of a fun activity to do with the kids after the book. Super fun. And like, like I said, if you don't have a budget, white glue, it really does work, you know, just as good is just a different kind of feel to it, that's all. There. So you can kind of make it look more organic. You wanna put more leaves on top. Like, let's say you want to put a little bit more dirt. I have a little bit more dirt. Maybe you want to make your dirt a little bit more obvious. So I would probably gonna take some dirt here and I would just kind of, and take something just a little bit more subtle. So you have more variation of dirt. 
But eventually, like I said, this stuff will dry clear. So it looks white now, but it'll dry. like, here's some bark that, has, that I have inside here somewhere. There. Right. I can always send you a photo tomorrow when it's all dry and see how awesome it looks. Yeah, we can post that out to let people see what we did. Um, there is about seven minutes left. Is there anything le left that you wanted to follow up with, with before we do the final draws and then everyone can leave? <laughs> this could be a really fun project. Let's say you're collaborating. Like I said, it's so hard to tell on the camera. It's unfortunate, but it's so cool. To, like when I look at it in real life, it actually looks pretty good. Let me see if I can get a better. You see how it looks like he's swimming? It's like, look how, look how shiny it is. <laughs> that's for the tape, right? <laughs> you know, I know, but that's cool. It's cool like, looking, looking at the different textures. That is neat. I don't think this is such a, like a super high definition camera or anything, so. Okay. Well, thank you so much. I'm like I know a lot. A lot of you are nervous about the um, about the uh, the using of the dirt and going outside and painting in the dirt. But I I promise you, it's so much fun. Highly recommend it. Uh, Denise says, "What kind of collage or projects did you do with the book? Not yet." Oh, so I have I have not done collagraphs. So that is one thing that we're going to be working on. Um, so color graphs, like I said, it's like where you glue stuff on a big piece of board and then you play ink and then you stamp it. So you stamp like the, uh, you know, your found things. Um, we did leaf guys. We went and did mud painting. We mud painted on the wall, which was awesome. It just rained and then it just disappeared. And then um, we did a nature walk early last semester where we went to like the rec center down the street and we did some um, some land art where we put things together and then we photographed them with our phones. So all of these things. Cool. So there you go. Are there any other questions? I know, like I know, and I, it's, it's, you, you're right, it's different. Like you got, you, you said, like they're librarians, are they gonna wanna get this dirty? But the idea is that you're collaborating, right? You are reaching out to other people and you're working collaboratively. So maybe you're not guiding the messy job. Maybe if you have an art teacher in your school or you have a teacher who likes to do art, they can guide that process. And all you do is guide the discussion from the book. True. Uh, Marilyn says, this could be a cool idea for an about me um or character representation from a novel yeah and like I said like I I mean I I usually um like even like the one we did with the um, uh, shades of brown or brown, what is it called brown is me I, I, got, I gotta remember the title because I did a few books on that it's amazing the discussion that we had with the kids because when kids draw skin they draw the like it's either brown beige or whatever <laughs> And then we started talking about using um, colors as metaphors. So like, instead of saying, I am brown, I am cinnamon brown. I am like, you know, so you're finding uh, an object or a thing, thing in nature that your color relates to. And that was all inspired by the book that we read, which was a be beautiful because the, the book talks about that. The book is using these things, these natural things to describe the different colors of, of skin. So, um, yeah, it was just a beautiful way. Like I, I say, like pretty much, I would say most of my lessons nowadays are being inspired by a book that I come across. Mm -hmm. um, Jane says she has a colleague who's really into art and she sees this collab uh, in her near future using the book to lead into this art. And like, you know, and what I've shown you here, this stuff is pretty advanced. Like I wouldn't be doing all of this with like your kindergarten class or your even like, I would even say your grade three or four. It can get really messy. Um, but you can do all of the other lessons. You can go outside and you can make, you can make land or you can actually go and find things that are not permanent. Like this is going to become permanent. So you can do temporary art. So you go outside, you collect, you work together, you're collaborating, um, you know, focus on the core competencies, you know, how do you do, you know, how you're socially responsible when you go out, 
Um, yes. How do you work collaboratively? Be inspired by the book. You know, create your character, character development. Tell your story through pictures, right? Mm -hmm. And then go in and, and, and create this. If you have a class iPad or whatever, and then go take some photos, and then you put those photos together and create a story. Yes, yes, yes. And then uh, Elizabeth says, a science teacher at their school does this uh, at the for Earth Day, where they just put the materials out and write messages for the natural elements, like the leaf man. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's amazing. Like I said, or you, you know what you do is you take one gigantormous piece of paper on Earth Day, you put a bunch of containers with dirt and water and a bunch of brushes, and you have kids create, create a mural. Once they draw, you hang it out. You hang it out. And you use a, 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 um, a resource that's natural and you didn't pollute anything. And it's actually, uh, it's actually, um, uh, you know, environmentally friendly. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of fun. Every single kid, I had tons of kids like putting their handprint. All right. 